Today I'm going to make the chemical aniline, which is the simplest aromatic amine and an extremely important industrial chemical. Now originally I was going to synthesize this chemical directly from benzene, but the YouTuber Nomcopter Labs pointed me toward a video by Corrosion Chemistry on making aniline by the thermal decarboxylation of the chemical PABA instead. This would be immensely cheaper, safer, and faster than the benzene route, and considering I've done a very similar decarboxylation of niacin to pyridine in the past, and got great results with it, I figured I'd give this a shot. To get started, I add 115 grams of PABA to a boiling flask. Initially, I only added 100 grams, but added 15 more off camera once I realized I could pack it down somewhat. This was then set up for a basic distillation and heated at my heating mantle's maximum temperature. Now, PABA is shorthand for para-aminobenzoic acid, and is essentially just aniline with a carboxyl group situated para to the amine group. When this chemical is heated, the carboxyl group breaks off and forms carbon dioxide gas and liquid aniline. The carbon dioxide then floats away and out of the system while the aniline is left behind. When aniline then reaches its boiling point of 184 degrees Celsius, it boils away and then condenses into my collection flask. The distillation is continued for about 30 minutes until the rate of aniline distilling over is less than one drop every two seconds. At that point I go ahead and cut the heat and stop the reaction because I really don't want this yellow crap that formed to fuse to the bottom of my flask. I've done that before and it's really annoying. This leaves me with a flask of crude aniline which has a slight yellow tint to it. Now to dry and purify my crude aniline, I first add some potassium hydroxide and allow it to sit overnight to absorb any water that might be present. When I come back to it the next day, the now much drier aniline is added back to a new boiling flask and set up for another distillation. I crank my heating mantle all the way back up, and the point of this step is to try to further purify my crude aniline by redistillation. Ideally during this step, you would only collect distillate between 180 and 190 degrees Celsius, but I was using my only thermometer for a different project, so I didn't really bother. Regardless though, I don't even really think it's necessary as I've done this again since filming this video and virtually all of the distillate comes over in this range anyway. That said, using the thermometer is proper lab technique for something like this, but it doesn't really seem necessary for this particular project. Anyway, while I'm waiting on this step, I wanted to talk briefly about the uses of aniline as I mentioned it being an extremely important reagent at the start of the video, but I didn't really expand on that. Now, the vast majority of aniline is used to manufacture polyurethane, but it's also used to make Tylenol, indigo dye for blue jeans, and various other azo dyes. I intend to use it to make videos on all of these except for polyurethane and I can only make Tylenol if I figure out this acetic anhydride synthesis I've been working on. Keep a lookout for videos on those projects over the next few months if you're interested, and uh, now back to the aniline. Now, when this redistillation step is complete, there's a bit of blackened tar left in the boiling flask, and I collected 64.3 grams of mostly pure and mostly dry aniline. This represents an 80.1% yield, which I'm pretty happy with, especially considering how much lower my overall yield would be at this point if I had started with benzene. Aniline should be stored in a cool, dark place as exposure to UV light can cause it to yellow over time. Also keep in mind that aniline is highly toxic and exposure should be limited as much as possible. Aniline is also listed by the IARC as group three, which means that even though it is not classifiable as a human carcinogen, it has been shown to cause spleen mutagenesis in lab mice. Anyway, that's all I have for today, and now I want to take a moment to thank my patrons whose support is vital to keep this channel going. You guys are awesome, and just to let you know, I've already started work on the video requests I've gotten so far, including picric acid and potassium dichromate. Keep up the good ideas, and thank you so much for your support. To everyone else, I hope you found this video interesting, and if you'd like to see more like it, consider following me on TikTok or YouTube.